بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay, so now additionally, we'll, we'll also see some of the other VPN options. Like again, here we'll be uh, getting into some of the other VPN options like eVPN, but mostly we'll go in through with the overview. Uh, we don't get into the configuration of these VPNs like inter AS, CSC, and then multicast VPN or eVPN or Ethernet VPN, these concepts. So basically more in depth, you will see on these concepts as we progress with another paper that is a service part of VPN service paper. Probably in that we, we get into more details. So uh, next thing, like we have something like traffic engineering. So next thing, we also have something like the traffic engineering concepts. Now um, this is relevant to like MPLS traffic engineering, like the extensions, what we have in the OSPF or ISS protocols to support traffic engineering and also some other options like RSVP protocol, how it's going to help in that and then fast reroute options uh, basically will be describing. So which means most likely we don't get into much in depth on the configuration part. As I said, you will be seeing this more in the CCI advanced topics. Like as the search product, this paper is a prerequisite also for your CCI. So they expect you to know some uh, foundation knowledge of the traffic engineering concepts as well. Okay. Or you may see in some other papers as well. The next thing we have something like segment routing. Now, basically, this segment routing is uh, kind of used with with an MPLS and the source routing concepts. So it's a it's a kind of mechanism used with an MPLS, um, uh, basically with with the, with the help of NPLS, which which is going to provide some kind of uh, unique label to optimize the networks. So we can say this is more like an optimization to your networks, uh, whether it is a routing network or whether it is based on the MPLS networks. Okay, so we'll be seeing uh, something like unified MPLS options uh, where this unified MPLS is kind of additional features to the existing MPLS core infrastructure to provide a scalability and security and also offers some kind of simplicity. And also we have something like MPLS OEM. Again, this is OEM is again the same operation, administration and the maintenance of your MPLS networks. And this is mainly to monitor the monitor and finding the faults and keep the track of the devices in your MPLS networks. Okay. So maintenance is more about, you know, kind of updating the configurations, Operational is more about uh, maintaining or finding the faults or keeping the track of the devices in the MPLS networks. Now the next thing you also uh, see some of the quality of service options like quality of service uh, options like understanding the different models of the quality of service, the differences between these models and then understanding the boundaries between the service pod and the customer. And then the different MPLS, uh, if you are correlating with MPLS quality of service, then there are different models again in that. And also with the uh, MPLS traffic engineering quality of service, again, there are some options. So mostly if you see the describe option, so basically you need to understand it is more a uh, theoretical topic. You need to uh, get into more overview of those topics here again. Okay. And apart from the understanding this, again, there is an IPv6 flow label. Flow label is actually relevant to IPv6 where IPv6 uh, header is going to carry some of the qual some of the quality of service options, which is going to define the packet flow. And then also you'll see some implementations of the quality of service, like we'll see how to classify the traffic, how to do marking and how to, uh, what are the different congestion management or congestion awareness mechanisms, and also some kind of uh, policy shaping, policing and shaping options. So these two sections uh, mainly focuses on the quality of service with with implementation as well. The next thing we also have some sections on security. Now we have a couple of sections on security like providing the control plane security, protecting your control plane and protecting your BGP options. So with respect to BGP like we have BGP TTL security options and authenticating the BGP peers 
and then limiting the prefix suppression options and also we have something like bgp sec which is kind of extension of the bgp for validating the bgp updates and then we have bgp flow uh, flow space probably this is to prevent some kind of denial or distributed in left service attacks so we'll try to go, go through with them and additionally we have ldp security this is for mpls uh, ldp protocol for enabling the labeling inside the mpls core networks apart from that you also see some uh, overview of triple a concepts and then urpf unicast reverse path forwarding acls ddos attacks ddos options and then implementing some data security options and also these are the options re relevant to securing your automation options autom automation security related options so next thing we'll also see some of the concepts on uh, this is more on architecture like understanding some of the core architectures like how the metro ethernet works or mpls networks how the architecture works and and of course the unified mpls architecture which is a kind of you know additional features added to the existing mpls to provide more scalability and also the segment routing concepts how it works so already i have just given you the overview of this mpls so these things already uh, covered in the previous sections so this is kind of describing that initially and also we'll try to get into understanding some of the transport technologies like uh, basically transport technologies relates to the connectivity what uh, will be used by the service provider to connect their own sites or to connect to the customers so we have different options we use some optical fibers optical connections and also we use some kind of digital subscriber line options uh, which actually stands for you know uh, data over cable service interface uh, the digital subscriber line sorry this one the, this docs doxis options now doxis actually stands for data over cable right data over cable and interface service interface specification that's what it stands for it's an itu standard for data transfer again and also we'll see the different multiplexing options again tdm is something used time division multiplexing apart from that we have wave uh, we also have something like uh, dense uh, there are other options like wdm uh, wave division multiplexing and dense wave division multiplexing options but mostly we'll try to see what is multiplexing and how the time division multiplexing separate the signals of each customer when they go over the same wire and also we'll we'll uh, try to understand the passive optical network this is more like a theoretical concepts like uh, pom passive optical networks it is a technology used to provide a fiber to the end customer called as last mile generally and also some of the mobility options like like generally the mobility is 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 something relevant to your mobile broadbands uh, basically they started with 3g and then 4g you know and now the subscribers requires more bandwidth to send more data because most of the users are using some kind of videos or you know social sites and there is a more demand for speeding up the networks so probably here there, there is a concept something called a uh, radio access network that is what ran here stands for and this basically it's a kind of uh, network which connects to your uh, backbone the core backbone to the radio networks so we'll, we'll try to understand some uh, overview hierarchy on that as well so next thing we also have some uh, overview of the virtualization concepts we'll try to understand the concepts of virtualization like in the case of server virtualization we have something like virtual machines and some containers and their virtual switching concepts and also we'll we'll try to uh, get an overview on the on the nfv uh, network uh, function virtualization that's what it stands for it's a kind of architecture which is applied to the service for networks how it's going to apply and also we'll we'll see something like vnf vnf is again uh, responsible for handling the specific network functions running on the vms and there is an open stack open stack is a open source cloud computing platform for all the cloud environments so we'll try to understand uh, overview on this on these things and how they help in the in the service pro networks 
and then we'll move on to the automation section next in the automation and assurance so this is a common section automation assurance i just separated it uh, in this automation again we'll we'll try to understand the different apis uh, api stands for application programmable interface these are the different options uh, which can be used for in the cisco devices for network op network automation okay so api is kind of a set of protocols a set of routing or protocols or the tools we can say set of tools uh, which are used for building the software applications and they specify how they should interact with the devices okay and also we'll be seeing something called rest api representational state transfer uh, which is designed for network applications we'll be seeing this how to uh, interpret some basic external scripts on the cisco to configure a cisco device with that and then also there is something called network service orchestration now this nso refers to uh, refers to some kind of software solution that helps the network to operate uh, configure and automate multiple elements just as as given as per the requirement and then also there is something called yang this this is actually it stands for something like et another next generation basically it's a kind of data modeling uh, language for defining the data network management protocols like con netcom frescom there are some options anyway don't worry i will see uh, in that and also we'll try to see some of the management tools automation management tools like these are the tools and some are agentless and some are agent full uh, we'll try to see the difference between the agent and agentless uh, tools and and some of some of these options will compare the differences between them and the last thing there is something called one more section called assurance so probably in this section we'll try to understand or, or understand the snmp option snmp protocol and the pro versions and especially for monitoring your network we'll try to configure and verify that and additionally we'll also talk about netflow netflow or ip fix netflow is actually uh, kind of you know it's a it's a feature in the cisco devices basically to provide uh, it provides the ability to collect some kind of traffic which is coming and going onto the onto the network so basically that is done and ip fix is a kind of uh, ip ip flow information expert that's what it stands for so it does the same job of netflow but kind of standard standard implementation we can say the same job but cisco call it as a dead flow and generally the standard name is ip fix and also we'll see some of the assurance technologies relevant to this is relevant to some kind of automation like we have something like net netconf and risk risk conf so basically these are network configuration protocols for network management okay so basically they are responsible for installing and manipulating and deleting the configurations on the networking devices with some kind of simple interface and also we'll see something like grpc the grpc stands for group remote procedure calls then basically it is a kind of mechanism used uh, used in the using the networking device can be managed and its configuration and the data can be retrieved and installed uh, remotely 